<coughs> hey everybody, Dr. Rick here. Hoping that uh, everybody is having an unbelievable uh, day. Uh, hoping that you are making progress in the things that matter to you. I'm going to drop in real quick on you. I'm going to invade your space for a little while. I want to thank you for allowing me to do it. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, again, we are asking for your support in the work we do uh, with young black men, specifically through our Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative and expanded services, which include mental health, uh, career uh, training and so much more for young black males. Uh, we're in a crisis right now. And if we don't recognize and deal with this crisis, we will be suffering the consequences a long time from now. Uh, I'll get into that in other times, but we definitely need your support. Now, uh, I have literally for years been a staunch uh, opponent of the feminization of the black male image. And let me be clear, when I say the feminization of the black male image, I'm not talking about uh, feminine men, I'm not talking about gay men, I'm talking about taking men who are perceived to be masculine men or perceived black men of power and success and then finding ways to feminize their image. Uh, you can go back, I mean, as far as Larry, further than that, but you can go back to Larry Johnson, uh, one of the most, I mean, imposing uh, physical presences in basketball and his alter ego was grandmama. You can look at how many men in Hollywood have been coerced into putting on dresses. The latest being Lakeith Stanfield. And while I'm not surprised, I will say I am disappointed. Uh, and, you know, there's all this talk about, you know, that's one of the things that you're going to have to do in order to have career success and longevity in Hollywood. Uh, there are very few who have not done it. Um, and it is something that I have spoken on so much that I'm almost tired of looking at it because there's going to be a large part of the population that's going to say it's just entertainment. Well, anytime that people come to me with that, instead of going through the psychological, scientific, uh, breakdown of why it's not just entertainment. I tend to just point to the fact that if what you see in imagery on the screen and what you hear in audio uh, play out on the radio was only entertainment and it did not have any impact on how we see ourselves, how we move, how we perform, uh, and the decisions we make and all of that, you wouldn't have some of the top companies in the world vying and bidding for 30 second spots on the Super Bowl, which is the most watched uh, individual program uh, each and every year and paying five million, six million, seven million and, and up for those 30 second slots. If those 30 second slots in and of themselves didn't have an impact. And imagine when you start to use a repetitive cycle of the same idea. It has an impression. That's how we learn. That's how we develop. That's how we move. If you listen to something long enough, it's going to impact you. If you watch something long enough, it's going to impact you. If you consistently see a specific image, it's going to impact you. If you consistently see an image about yourself, it's going to impact how you see, how you see yourself. It's that simple. So then you have to look up and say, okay, there is obviously an agenda to feminize the black male image. Why? Because a black strong male image that it exposes, espouses uh, true masculinity is threatening. It is a fear. And what we are going to have to realize is that we're going to have to take 
some significant steps. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had filmmaker Tony Lindsay on. And one of the things Tony and I have talked about then and talked about since is the importance of us building our own and starting to move out and build our own. Something that I'm very proud of doing is working with the Yoda Aurora and all uh, black news and all black media. Uh, Cause the goal again is to create our own platforms to create and own the very uh, mediums through which we are being represented. So then we can choose, you just look. And even when you have a black uh, filmmaker, majority of the times because they are trying to stay within the confines of the construct, you've got to see a high level of femininity, a high level of dysfunction. Uh, it's hard to find a good, strong, solid, positive black woman. It's hard to find a solid, uh, dependable, hardworking, uh, and honorable black man. The black man is normally presented as somebody that's dogging the black woman. And, uh, and while there are plenty out there, the vast majority of black men are trying very hard to be everything they can be for their families, uh, their wives and their children and their communities. That's the reality that we're out here and we're busting our ass to be the best we can be. No, we're not perfect, but we're out here. But we're not represented. Well, we are, who, who is represented are the men who harm women, the men who invade homes, the young boys who shoot each other. And what is presented isn't even presented in context to understand there's a reason why this is happening. It doesn't justify it, it doesn't excuse it, but you have to understand it in the proper context in order to be able to process it properly and then know how you wanna move about, how you think about it, what needs to be done about it. We are going to have to do a better job. When I saw that picture of Lakeith Stansfield, this, this dude was not even just in a dress. He was in a dress sitting with his legs crossed with uh, lace stockings on and some type of head scarf. And they'll tell you, hey, it's just a freedom of expression. No, there has to be an expectation of masculinity, there has to be a presentation of masculinity because how it's perceived and seen has a massive impact, not just on our children, but on how we see ourselves, how others see us, and how we can project. There needs to be an ability to look at a black man and see his ability to defend. There has to be a need to look at a black man and see his willingness to defend. You know, that used to be seen in our posture, in our walk, in our gait, in the way that we looked at you. You sort of knew, don't try me. And we've slowly moved away from that to where we just want to be accepted. We want to do what everybody else is doing. We want to be accepted. We don't want to appear threatening. We don't want to appear... My whole thing is... If I'm not bothering you and you're not bothering me, that's not a problem. Now, if you're bothering me, yes, my menacing look is 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 a problem to you because you want to do something. But just the way I present myself tells you I'm going to be a problem. So what do you do? You you dumb me down. You dumb me down enough that the people who are looking up to me start to dumb themselves down. And when I say dumb down, I mean feminized. And so now I'm no longer threatening. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a joke. Now, people appraise me for my courage to go out and approach that and deal with that. And the truth of the matter is, I'm just trying to be accepted. I'm just trying to fit in. Not really any courage, just trying to be what everybody else will, will, will approve of and will give praise to. I haven't found the courage to be into in myself. I haven't found the courage to 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 express my true masculinity because it's it's big and it scares people. And I don't want to scare people. I don't want to be on the outside. I want to be accepted. My thing is I would much rather be respected than to be accepted. And sometimes that's gonna mean I'm gonna be abrasive going to be harsh 
and even sometimes brutal when tested. But I need to be that way because I need to always maintain my edge because my family's well-being depends upon it. There is an agenda to feminize the black male image because it weakens the black male uh, in so many different ways. We have to make up in our minds that we are not going to sit quietly while this happens and that means that we're going to have to be actively involved and number one being the most uh, fr uh, frequent and prominent source in the socialization of young black males uh, we, are, we are learning and we haven't already learned that we cannot trust the society to properly socialize our kids especially our boys we cannot uh, trust music, the music industry. We cannot trust television programming or the movie industry to properly socialize our young boys. And it seems that with, you know, I find it ironic that Lakeith Stanfield, uh, you know, had a role in the movie Get Out, which had so many overtones and undertones about how the system moves and operates. Uh, I find it ironic that, you know, a person that wasn't able to get out then doesn't look like he's gotten out in real life. Um, and like I said, while I'm not surprised, I am disappointed because I saw a lot of promise in him. I was looking at him, him as one of the big up and comers. And I'm not saying he's not going to be a great movie star or actor. What I'm saying is, you know, when someone is representing manhood, and we can say all we want to, they're just celebrities. And they are, they're just celebrities. What you said all you want to, but the problem is their exposure and the way that they're held in high regard makes them bigger than life to our children. And our children are gonna to aspire to the things that are bigger than life. Now, what should be bigger than life is the fathers, but the fathers are gonna to need to be present. The fathers are gonna to need to be active. The fathers are gonna to need to be pronounced in their presence. And so we have some issues we need to deal with. And a lot of that is going to be, again, owning our own. A big part of that is going to be what we do at the Black Man League, right? A passage initiative. Uh, it's going to be a lot of things that we have to do. And we're going to have to really start taking what we do seriously. We are way too casual for people that's in last place. I'm sorry. We are way too casual for a people who are in last place in every category, that socioeconomic category or sociopolitical category that matters. We've got to do better. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out. It's the first stop of some runs I got to make before I get back to the office. But I had to drop this one on you. Uh, hey, what are we going to do? Again, show some love, show some support, and really, truly... Uh, love and give. Click the link in the box and give to what we're doing or you can give through our cash app account. With that being said, I'm out of here.